Sadashiva Samarambam Shankara Sharya Madhyamam Asmada Sharya Paryantam Vande Guru Param Param Ishvaro Gurat Meti Muti Veda Vibhagine Vyomabda Vyapta Dehaya Dachina Murta Yena Maha Sava Vedanta Sedanta Gocharam Dama Gocharam Govindam Paramanandam, Sat Guru Pranatosh Maham, O Shanti, 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 O. <clears throat> okay, we are recording. You you hear everything I say. If I ask a question, Lin, can you answer if you hear everything? Okay, good. So when I when I say something and then I see how 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 quick it is for the signal to go and come back, and then I can see more clearly the improvement of the signal today. So Vijarani, okay. is, huh? So far so good, huh? That's right. So uh, the purpose of this passage on Panchadas is to analyze the mechanism of superimposition. And uh, it's the bottom line, it's very simple. So as, as we know, we have the Ahamkara and uh, and the Kutasta happening simultaneously. Yeah? The, the Ahamkara is superimposed on Kutasta and they are experienced uh, as one, uh, one block. You know, it's one thing, you know. One thing is the general aspect, the the the, the isness of something, okay, which is taken to be the ahamkara, but both are experienced in one single uh, block, so to speak. You know? So we try to understand how this superimposition takes place, analyzing it from from different angles, and uh, and taking in consideration perception and cognition. Huh? So one part is uh, is the general part, the other is the namarupa, huh? or better said, the specific part of something. Okay. At, at the time of right knowledge, the samanya amsa, the generalized part, and the, the superimposed part, the visesha, the specific, huh? are real as both are clearly perceived by the pramana, so-called the eye in this case. So that, you know, with the vision, we have a right knowledge, there is enough sunlight, and then we see that there is something and we see the specifics of that thing, both recognition, the recognition of the samanya, the general aspect of the easiness of something, we experience the easiness of something, and the specific of something, okay? The specific of something depends on the isness, and both are experienced in this case by the pramana, the I. Huh? So in this case, both the samanya and the vishesha are correct knowledge, are right knowledge. But at the time of, uh, of twilight, let's say, uh, there are there is room for erroneous perception or misconception. No? And then we still have both there. We have the, the Samanya and the Vishesha Amsa, both. We still perceive something, and then there is still something there. But unfortunately, we see the snake over the rope. Okay, so the part which is the Samanya is, is real, and the snakeness is the not real superimposition produced by the human mind, okay? So now the Samanya is real because it's the isness of any and everything, whether we perceive it clearly, such as the self or not, or we perceive it as the ahamkara, still the isness, that's why we say you are, you exist and you cannot deny your existence, but you are not very clear about what it is that exists. Yeah? So it's it, the, in the Samanya, you know, in, in, in the lack of a clear knowledge, the Samanya is real, huh? but there is room for erroneous cognition. 
Samania Amsa is real. And uh, it's real even at the time of wrong knowledge. Even when we see the Ahamkara over the Atma, even when we see the, the, the snake over the, the rope, it's still the Samania Amsa, the, the, the basic, the generalized, the isness part is correct knowledge. Huh? It's very simple. So I, I'm getting it right. I exist. So we have to always bring to our human experience. I exist. Yes, you exist. You exist, but you you exist from existence itself. You are not the, the body-mind complex. Huh? You are not the, the attributes of this organism. Huh? You are the very isness. You are the very conscious isness. But once once we superimpose the ahamkara, once we superimpose snakeness on the on the rope, and then uh, due to lack of uh, enough light, uh, and then we have an invalid knowledge. So in that case, the vishesha amsa, you know, the, the the cognition of the the specific part is is erroneous cognition. Therefore, during the right cognition, samanya is real. Vishesh is also real, and and during the wrong cognition, Samani is real, but Vishesh isn't real, okay? So again, it's very simple. We see we see the isness, we see our very conscious existence, but somehow we superimpose the body-mind complex, okay? And then we are perceiving something real, clear, correctly. There is isness, there is conscious existence. Excuse me, just for a moment. Yes, Sylvia? Uh, uh, we are in the middle of the class, okay? Ciao, tesoro. She probably forgot it. So, when we look and we see, yeah, we know that there is conscious existence within our human experience, but uh, we we take it to be uh, the ahamkara. We take the rogue to be uh, a snake. Yeah? Erron erroneous perception. This erroneous perception is a jyasa. It's always there is something real about it, but there is something unreal about it. Yeah? Very simple. So everything is the self, whether we perceive it correctly or incorrectly. The wrong knowledge is that everything is, everything exists, okay? But then if we take the attributes of Maya, if we take the, the name and forms and, and colors and attributes, and then that is wrong knowledge in regards to the real nature, of that Vishesha part, Nana Vishesha Amsa. So we mix up the real and the real parts. If both of them are Satya, it is Yana. If both are, are faithful to what that thing is, and then we have good knowledge. Otherwise, we have wrong knowledge. Okay. Once we understand this, we should ask the question, which is Satya and which is Mitya? Samanya Satya and Vishesha Am Am Ramta Amsa are mixed together. So which one is Satya and which one is Mitya? So Satya is the self, is Atma, it's my conscious existence, which is something other than the intellect and the mind or the body-mind complex, that is Satya. And then my instrument of knowledge is the body-mind complex, which is mitya. Huh? And then there is this entity called reflected jiva, reflected consciousness, which is still is mitya, which is the most amazing thing, unless it understand its true nature as satya. <laughs> and then because everything happens within, in the scope of mitya, you know, with the power of maya, we have this reflecting mediums, and then we have the three bodies, and then we have yeah, the subtle body reflecting this original limitless consciousness that uh, unavoidably identifies itself as the hamkara, as the body-mind complex, but uh, it has the potential to understand its true nature. Yeah? So even reflected consciousness is mitya, unless it understands that it is such a, 
no? understand, no, my true nature is original limitless consciousness. Yeah, Linda, in that case, why did it just say, if both are satya, which is on a, surely satya and mitya are always mixed together. Yeah. How can they both be satya? Could you repeat, please? Um, in the sentence just now, it said, if both are satya, and that says, it is yana. Um, yeah. But how is it possible for them both to be satya? So surely satya no. and pure. Always... No, we, we, we did, it, last class I was trying to contextualize it so that we don't have any uh, misunderstanding. So uh, in this passage here, Vidyaranya is present satya, which, that which is which faithful to the perception is wrong is right perception good perception okay so, okay you perceive okay. right yeah. this this the, the the robe is a robe you perceive right the hankara is the yeah. self and then you uh, resolve things into satya the rope is satya the self is satya both you 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 perceive correctly you understand so uh, that's the difference okay, even, got it. Yeah, even if you. you even if you if if you see the, yeah, when both are correct, both are such. When when there is a superimposition and then there is a, a wrong knowledge mixed up with a right knowledge, right knowledge is being represented as such and wrong knowledge as Mitya. It's a little bit confusing, the utilization of such and Mitya words in this context here. And I tried to, to warn you guys about that. Yeah. Oh, in the case of self-knowledge, what should be the Satya Vishesha Amsa? Self is. To make it right knowledge, you should not say I, you, she, he. Yeah? You should say the self is. So self is the Satya, and then he, she, I is the Ahamkara. So the Ahamkara always is presented by, by I, she, and he. Yeah? Of course, ahankara cannot be it, and the ahankara cannot be we. Yeah? Ahankara is I, you, <coughs> she, and he. Yeah? So you should either say kutasta or brahman, and that will become satya visheshamsa, which is covered during anyana. So anyana is like a veil or, or a cover. Yeah? that somehow uh, prevents us to see things as they are. Yeah? And in the case of self-knowledge, it uh, prevents the Jiva Atma to see the self as the only nature, the, the true nature of the Ahamkara, or, and furthermore, the only reality. Yeah? So uh, that is the case in the case of uh, wrong knowledge. So in that case, Vishesha Amsa is covered, and it's covered by I, you, he, and she. So how, how the true nature of the Atma, the self, is covered? It's covered by what? By the notion Ahamkara, I, you, he, and she. Yeah? You will see in the next verse. This Vijaranya struggles to convey self is real and I is unreal, referring to the Ahamkara. So every time they will say I, myself, the myself part is satya and the I is the ahamkara, okay? And we're gonna have, we're gonna see some nice uh, 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 unfoldment here to explain. Uh, and it's quite beautiful to see why the I is the ahamkara and should be uh, discarded as wrong knowledge. In the case of the shell silver example, thisness is real, huh? and, uh, and, uh, and the silverness is, is uh is wrong knowledge. Vishesha Amsa is wrong knowledge. Huh? So this the shell should be seen as shellness, not as silverness. Huh? But the isness is there in both the case. So Samanya and Vishesha are different. One is Satya and another is Mitya, and we we have joined together and say this is silver. Huh? So the real and the real can never be combined. 
it's like the wedding between uh, Jagratha uh, Bright and uh, you see my, my, my video is doing like that. Hmm. Sometimes it does happen lately with uh, Zoom. Selfhood, which is cheat, which is sat cheat, satya, samanya apsa, and ihood, mitya, chidabasa, vishesha amsa are different, but we combine both due to our ignorance. So this uh, beginningless ignorance collapse one with the other, and our work with Vedanta is to discriminate, separating one from another. So they are both experienced together. Yeah. The, the satya and mitya, the the, the isness and the ahamkara, and uh, they they live together we, because we, we superimpose them, but here it says that they can never be really combined because one is satya and one is mitya, but mitya can be superimposed on satya because it is a, a, a reflection on the screen of consciousness, we could say. We only apparently, apparently combine both due to our ignorance. So we say, I myself do this. Yeah? <clears throat> Would be strange to say, the self does this. Yeah? I myself do this. The self, the self does not include the notion of otherness, yeah? but I includes the notion of something other. I and the others, I and you, and he and she and it and so on. But self does not include the sense, the understanding of anything other than the self. Huh? So we say, I myself, I is Mitya and self is Satya. And they are combined in this, in this sentence. Huh? From this, we come to now that in both the case of the example, erroneous shell perception and, uh, and self perception, there is real Samanya Amsa and unreal Shesham experienced by us. So we'll never end. It will never end. Okay. We will continue to experience both together. And we don't need to remember again and again, oh, I. So the I is Ahankara and the self, I myself, the oh, the, we don't. We don't need to remember that. You know, and you don't need to remember again and again. Okay. And uh, this is self-knowledge. So you, the language is going to go. We're going to experience both together. You did your radio discrimination. You have separate both. Okay. But yet, you know that your inferior nature as a hamkara can only transact in the world, associate, appearing to associate with, with the with, with, with the self, with, with Atma. Okay. With the the real thing, the isness of Brahman, the, the consciousness of Brahman. So we experience both together, but we understand clearly that there is a, a distinction and uh, literally, in fact, they can never be combined, but it's an appearing superimposition and we experience both together. Every time we experience the world, we experience three things. We experience the otherness, we experience the ahamkara and we experience consciousness, okay? But we often discount consciousness somehow, okay? Due to this power of Maya. That's why we say knowledge is that which is always good. Oh, the, the, the next sloka, 39, People use such expression as Devadatta himself is going there. You yourself seen this. I myself am, am able. No? So we often use this expression. No? So it's again, it's a, a, it's, a, no, it's a continuation of the same concept. Vidaranya gives the example in support of what he said in the previous uh, uh, verse. Yeah? In every sense, sentence, we should find Satya, Samanya, and uh, Vishesha, Amsa. Yeah? 
the real thing and the superimposition in every sentence, we're gonna see that when we refer to I, you, she, and he. Uh, here, the Vedata will go by himself. It means that he does not need an escort. The Vedata individualized is the ego, Chidabhasana, the reflect consciousness, who has arrived and it will go. It will go with the death of the body. It will go in deep sleep and uh, Nivikalpa Samad in several other instances, you know, uh, the Devadat, the Shidabhasa may go. The I, the I disappears in several, several instances, in some instances. The Vadata is Mitya. Why? Because uh, it, it arrives, but it uh, disappears from time to time. It's Mitya. You know? And the self is Svayan. The self is Satya. The word is Ajastana Satya. It is Kutasta. And that alone is meant when we say Tatvam Masi. Yeah? Tatvam Masi. It means the self. I am that self. Yeah? I am that Brahman. Uh, Tatva, you see for yourself. Here also there is uh, Satya, Samanya, Vyas, Vyayan, and Mitya, Vishesha. Right. The word Tatva. So I don't want to go into much details. Yeah? The person is Mitya, the Ahamkara is Mitya, and the self. And uh, in this in this sentence, you know, I myself, she herself, and he himself, we have examples of this co combination between the self and he, she, and it, okay? Meaning to say the ahamkara combined with the self, and it's so clearly exposed in our language. And uh, uh, we need to understand that one aspect, one part is real and the other part is uh, is media. Yeah? And... Uh, and Mitya Satya transcends the three persons. It is different from all the three. All the three are mutually, mutually exclusive. Okay. So I is exclusive of he, she, and it, and, and, and he. Yeah? And uh, so she is exclusive of I and he. Yeah? So they are mutual uh, exclusive. But uh, self is common in all those expressions of the first, second, third person in which the I you know, arise to say, I myself, you know, she herself. It's all referring to the ahamkara, the someone, a person, a body mind complex. So we see you know, that they are one excluded out, but there is what? There is a common denominator. There is a, a, a ground of beingness. There is a, a common factor there which does not exclude he, she, and I is the self. I myself, she, herself, and so on. So satya, the self, is inclusive of all the three. These statements are employed in the world. In these examples, we have to note one thing. When we give rope example, snake example, in the example, we have the Samanya comes first yeah, in the sentence and Vishesha comes second. Yeah. So we see that there is something and then there is a uh, Namarupa, uh, uh, the, the specific of something. No? So like this is silver, Samanya comes first, you know, this, the isness, and then silver come second. But in the case of Devadatta, or I myself, she herself, it is different, okay? Vishesha Amsa is expressed first, and then Samanya Amsa should come, come second, okay? So Vishesha is expressed first, and there is no rule that Samanya should come first. So in these expressions, we say that I, the ahamkara comes first and then myself okay so it's 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 different from jesus a snake jesus the body mind complex okay so there is an inversion there but there are no rules that say that you cannot be uh reversed you know like the vishesha amsa expressed first her herself he himself i myself and myself himself 
she uh, uh, herself and himself comes second and that's all right one is Satya and one is Mitya and Mitya Jahamkara is experienced due to erroneous knowledge erroneous perception yeah so how could we miss out on something like that so I mean, how not to miss out on something like that, you know? I mean, even with the help of the scriptures, it's such a work to, to correct this wrong knowledge eh? and, uh, and understand that everything is there. It's being supported even by language. Eh? The, 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 the media aspect of myself, the ahamkara comes first. You know? and, uh, and we have to correct this erroneous perception that uh, the I and myself are synonymous, are equal, okay? Otherwise, we're going to be saying that that I, the ahamkara, she, which is different from I, everything is the self, and the self is one, non-dual, yeah? uh, of the same nature that includes all the normal rupas. So that's the bottom line. Anything from you guys? It's very clear. Thank you. Yes, it is very clear. But it's interesting also how teachers and masters like Ramana Maharishi uses the word I so much in his teachings. And so many spiritual masters use the word I. Um, yeah, it's, it's just in interesting. Which, in, which, in, in, which, in which context? The higher I, no? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. And using the eye to, to get to the higher eye by looking into the nature of it. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it can be confusing at times. We need to understand because uh, I I that's what came up to me right away when the eye was being uh, 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 pointed out as is Mitya, yeah, the the villain, the, the villain here. And uh, so we should not never hold on to the eye. Yeah? We remember the 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 indications, the suggestions, and the meditations proposed, suggested by Nisargadatta Maharaj and Ramana Maharaj, uh, they say, hold on to the I, 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 I. But uh, this I is, is the imposter, you know? You hold on to the yeah. I until you find out the true nature of the I, the source of the I, which is the self. Uh? So as the I is going to take us to the self, you uh, so the she is not going to take us to the self. She is going to take she to the self. If we get, yeah, if we get trapped with involvement with she or he, and then and that is not conducive yeah. to the self, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> the demonstrative pronoun, pronoun, this is common to such diverse perceptions, such as this is silver, this is cloth, this, and so forth. Similarly, the word self is applied to all the three persons, first, second, third, I, you, and he. So, so we use this word, this, to, to, to everything. Yeah? Any object, we can say this or that, uh, depend, depend on how... Uh, Close, it is what? So we have this pronoun that we can use to anything. It's one single thing. Huh? Uh, likewise, we have one single word, which is self, which applies to every uh, human being, regards, regardless of the, the gender, huh? he and she. Now, nowadays, they have different genders that they are come up, coming up with. We are not going to go there. But uh, he and she. Huh? Uh, is going to appear uh, as herself, himself, and I myself. Yeah? So the same word similarly is applied to the three persons. Yeah? That's very simple. Satya Samanya Amsa is called Samanya Amsa because it inherits all the three, all the, all the media similarly. So the isness is called Samanya Amsa, yeah? because it uh, it is the, the ground of existence of Venus, 
of uh, th that sustains you know, uh, uh, everything in Mitya, yeah? all configurations of Mitya. Similarly, the word Svayam, which is Satya, Samanya Amsa, uh, it goes with first person, second person, and third person, meaning to say Svayam is self. Yeah? Such as Samanya Amsa pervades all the, the three, uh, he, she, and I. Yeah? The, the three aspects, the three specifics of three body-mind complex with uh, you know, first, second, and third person. Such a Samanya Amsa must pervade every Mitya Vishesha Amsa, of course. The isness is the ground of beingness of all Namarupas, all Vishesha Amsas, yeah? superimposed. By definition, Mitya is that which does not have its own existence. So this is a very important definition. By definition, so there are several definitions for Mitya. Right? One of them is that uh, is that it does not have its own existence. No, it it somehow uh, it it we say that it borrows existence. Okay, for lack of a better uh, word, yeah but uh, it does not have its own existence yeah? by definition. By definition, a uh, meat is that which is bound by time. By definition, meat is that which change from moment to moment, yeah? and uh, and so on. By definition, meat is any and everything that is defined by its attributes and so on. But the isness is there and never really belongs to meat. The isness belongs to satya. Because any configuration of any ahamkara does not enjoy its own isness. So the body mind construct and the reflect consciousness upon the body mind complex does not have its own isness, does not have its own consciousness, does not have it on its own. Huh? It's 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 landed by. Sachitananda, it, it's to be borrowed from somewhere and for it. Some has to land isness. Now, every Mitya Vishesha Amsa has to borrow its uh, isness yeah, from Brahman. One beggar cannot borrow from another beggar. So, meaning to say, I cannot lend my reflect consciousness to anybody else. Suppose my, my, I have a uh, an uncle that died two days ago. I mean, I did not go to the funeral because it's too far away. But imagine I go there and then I say, okay, so here you go. So there is this dead body here. I'm going to borrow my consciousness to this dead body and bring it back to, to life. Huh? No, a beggar cannot borrow for another beggar. Why? Because... The consciousness I enjoy here is not my property. <laughs> you understand? If it was my property, I could, you know, give life to my uncle. But no. So a beggar cannot lend or borrow from another beggar. Uh, there is only one source of rich, of richness, of uh, conscious existence. No? It has to be borrowed from Satya, Samanya Amsa. This isness of silver is borrowed from such a shell. So the isness of the silver, which was superimposed on the shell, is borrowed by the existence, the apparent existence of the shell, which is meant to be such a, but as we know, it's such a in reference to a secondary superimposition, which is the Prachibasika, projection of the human mind, okay? So the isness of the silver, yeah? the silver does not exist, is borrowed by the, from the shell, okay? The shell is, uh, is said to be real, therefore satyam appears there, but it's an apparent reality. So it's apparent satya, okay? So the satya shell is in, in fact a mitya shell, but uh, put in, uh, in in comparison with uh, with the secondary projection, which is what the human mind does, that is reality, and the projection we do is absolutely 
uh, uh, delusional, okay? So what is delusion? Is to project delusion, to project something on something that's not real. <laughs> that's the ultimate delusion. Huh? So the world itself is a delusion, but when we see the, the things as something else, and then it's a, it's a double delusion, so. This isness of the snake is borrowed from the rope. Otherwise, Mitya cannot enjoy uh, any existence. It has to be borrowed. So two levels, two levels. One is Brahman, by the power of Maya, borrows existence to the world of objects, okay? And then the world of objects borrows existence to the superimposition of the human mind, of the human intellect, right? So if we see a snake over the rope, is the rope which is boring its existence, which was boring in the first place from Maya Ishwara, okay? So everything is coming from Brahman, and then we have the agent, which is Maya Ishwara, and then it, it somehow borrows, it lends existence to the rope, and then the rope is going to subsum subsequently borrows existence to the imaginary uh, ahamkara, imaginary snakeness. Yeah? So Brahman has borrowed existence to the body-mind com com complex, to ahamkara. Yeah? And then we see yeah, this body-mind complex, and then we further... Yeah, we further superimpose the notion that I am the physical body. You understand? So there are there are layers and layers of delusion, and the ultimate delusion is I am the I am matter. I am only the physical body. Yeah? But we know that is the subtle body that is producing the physical body and and enlivening the physical body. Yeah? So uh, very interesting subject the way those projections of superimposition take place. Very few people interested in these kind of conversations. No wonder we are here alone, the three of us. Okay. If you want to catch Kutasta, you should turn your attention to the self. If the word self is misunderstood as ahamkara, you write the word with a capital S. S. So it does not help much. Eh? Uh, these things of writing uh, capital S, capital I, to, to try to make a distinction in between the inferior nature and the superior nature of the self, of the I, you understand? Uh, or consciousness, consciousness with capital C and, you know, it uh, it does not help much, but at least it is a reminder you know, that uh, we have a superior nature. It is of non-dual nature and it is the only reality. And we should never take the ahamkara to be the kutasta, huh? to be the self. If we misunderstand the ahamkara for the self, huh? and then we will suffer, we will be in confusion. Huh? And if it's necessary, you know, so write some notes. Huh? Aham Brahma's me. Huh? Oh, I am the capital I, I am the original self the capital self and so on, if that could be of any help. So the ultimate help is not programming yourself through repetitions or notes, but it's by assimilating, understanding these teachings, right? So the verse 41, the doubter comes in and says, the concept of I, may be different from the concept of self. But what has this to do with Kutasta? No? 
And then we derive a response. The word self denotes kutasta and vice versa. So it's interesting to see this uh, this dialogue here. It's almost, it gives me the impression that Vidyarani was there and there were some people listening to him. And then there was an objector saying to him, you know, what the hell, what are you talking about? You know, we are talking about Kutasta. And now <clears throat> you are, you are bringing different concepts. Yeah? You are separate the I from the self and so on. And then, you know, getting us confused. Uh, we want to know about the Kuta star. We, we got into this business here because we want to understand the difference between Kuta star and Brahman and Kuta star and the Ahamkara. Né? And then uh, and then Vidyaranya says the word self denotes Kuta star and vice versa. So it's the same thing. Okay. Atma, self, Kuta star. In the beginning, we were under the impression that there was a slight distinction, but there isn't. It's a different words for the same Atman. Uh, the answer is, he says, why do you talk uh, about uh, Aham and Svayam? Uh, another word that he has been using recently is Svayam as the self, bringing more and more names, words for the same, for the same self. You know? Why do you talk about Aham and the self as Svayam? You have introduced this chapter to reveal what Kutasta Adhisthana is, and you don't discuss Kustata anymore. You keep talking about Aham and Svayam. Why have you renounced the Kutasta topic, introduced this new topic? Yeah. And then the student did not understand what's happening and uh, and, and raised this, yeah, this question, which is a valid question. Yeah. Then Vidyarania says, a very simple thing that uh, it's just the same thing. Svayam is another name for Satya, which is another um, name for Atima, which is the name, another name for Kutasta, and so on. The word self is convenient to show that I myself, he himself, she herself. So we, we keep using this word self because it refers to the nature of the I, the nature of he, the nature of she, the all, reflect consciousness, all ahamkaras, all ahamkaras, they refer to themselves, I, myself, him, himself, or she herself. Huh? So the self here is correcting this misunderstanding of defining myself as I, he, and she, and then we bring the self there, okay? So therefore, we have these teachings around the Atma is the self. How many times have we heard about that? The Atma is the self because we refer to ourselves as I, he, and she. But we always say I myself. So the I you know, is referred with I myself. So therefore, the I is the self. Okay, And language exposes that. This common denominator, myself, himself, herself, the self is there all the time, lending existence to I, he, and she. Yeah? So that's why we use this expression, the self. The self pervades, incorporates, you know, all the three persons. So the self is to be seen as Kutasta, the Atma. It is a device used so that Kutasta pervading all the Chidabasa can be understood. Therefore, Vidyaranya says by the differentiation of Aham and Sivayam, what understanding we gather regarding Kutasta is the question. So he is exposing yeah, the differentiation of the aham kara, the aham, the I, yeah, and the self, yeah, svayam. And what understand we get regarding this kusat is the question. Yeah. He asked the question because the student did not did not know clearly the self and kutasta. Did you not know that they were one and the same? Yeah? So the teaching about the self and the I, the ahamkara and the self, 
is there to help us to understand the very nature of Kutashta, which is the Atman, Sibayam. Yeah? That's why he, he broke it into I and myself, she and herself, and so on. This Ajastana Kutasta is the meaning of the word Svayam, self, Atman. That is my approach, says Vijaranya. The word I does not refer to Kutasta, but the word self refers to Kutasta. I refers to reflect the consciousness, the Ahamkara, yeah, the Chidabasa while the self refers to original consciousness. Okay, and here it says that the word I does not refer to kutasta, but the word self refers to kutasta. Huh? He says, this is my approach. Yeah? That is my approach, says Vidyarana. Vidyarana is present these teachings, you know, and, uh, and he has a certain approach, a certain logic, and he is exposing the I, you know, as the the ahamkara, you know, as the the body mind construct. Okay, I, she, he, they are the body mind construct. They are the the the, the human beings, huh? And the self is the kuta stuff. Okay, therefore his approach is the I refers to the the ahamkara to the chidabatsa, and the self refers to Kutasta, okay, very simple. And then he keeps going on. Uh, there are a few things here that are worth The mechanism of uh, adhyasa, adhyasa, or superimposition is being discussed in the first person singular, you, the second person singular, and he or, or she, uh, the third person seeing refers to Chidabasa only because they are mutually exclusive and different. Okay, so when we when we see plurality, we know that it refers to media. Okay, and we see that uh, the I cannot exist as he, she because I immediately brings about otherness, as I mentioned before. Okay. So they are exclusive, exclusive of the difference. You know, they they are different from others, and they exclude the others. I and he and she. So all of that uh, are, are notions that refers to individuality. Okay, to to specifics of uh, nama rupas. Yeah? they are also limit all these yeah, vishesha parts, all these specific, they are also limit. And therefore, they refer to Mitya, they refer to Chidabasa, they refer to Jiza or Jiva or Ahamkara. Whereas the word self refers to Adhisthana, Chaitanya, or Kutasta. Yeah? Self is Adhisthana, the Adhisthana can go with I, with he, with she, yeah? and so on. It refers to a distance. This is what Vitarania established so far. Even though we enumerate them separately, the experience is not separate. In superimpositions, a distance and superimposition are experienced as one unity, as we have understood and determined. When we say this is a snake, this is part and is a distana and snake part is a jyasa. When I say I myself, the self part is satya, is chit, and the I part is reflected consciousness, is chit tabasa. Eh? They are both mixed together indiscriminately. Eh? So when they are both mixed together and we are not aware that they are mixed together. And then we are having a condition known as uh, as self-ignorance or jasa, no? or misunderstanding or confusion in regards to the true nature. And this is called Sivayan Aham Mitunikarana, okay? 
So I don't quite know that. Let's see if uh, our beloved Lynn has picked up that one. Sivaya. It's the mixing together of the self and the okay. I. And it's somewhere here. Huh? Okay. Okay, so that means this confusion mixing together. Huh? Is there any discussion all all this without telling us the secret? The secret is that uh, Kutasta and the self and Atima and uh, uh, Svayan are the same word. Everything is just Kutasta, the same word. But the objector here has a question. What happened to the Kuta star? Then Vijayaranya smiley, yeah, smilingly answers him, saying that uh, the word I refers to Chidabasa. And uh, that is why in this is nice. So the word I refers to Chidabasa, Chidabasa or the Jiva. Yeah? The experiencing entity. The experiencing entity must come from I, myself. So you need to have the hum in order to experience otherness, to experience duality, to experience objects of experience. Okay. When we say the word I, which refers to the chidabasa, reflect consciousness or the ahamkara, yeah? We have experience, but in Sushupti, yeah, when Chitabasa uh, falls in deep sleep, we do not have this aham, the aham disappears. So, so it's easy to see that the I, the aham, you know, is, uh, is something unreal because it even disappears in one of the three states. Yeah? It is resolved. It's resolved in, in what? It's resolved in something very close to, to consciousness and uh, consciousness alone. Okay? So there is no duality. There is no sense of I and otherness. Huh? And uh, therefore, I call the Chidabasa uh, Mitya. But it can be resolved even in deep sleep. In the other two states, the Aham, the I, is active. And we say so often, I, 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 all over the day, and I, 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 I. And we don't need to remember that uh, I is the self because uh, we are in a mode. And the mode is what? A interaction mode. When we interact in doing, doing work or, or social activities, uh, we don't need to be that as, oh, okay, discrimination here, I, 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 I. Is ahamkara? No, I'm the self, but I don't say self. I say I, but I is, let me keep discriminate. We don't need you discriminate until your knowledge is clear, and then you just let it be. You understand? When you live your life, and we say that in 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 the other two states, in the awakened state and this the in the dream state. Yeah, we are there. The I, the experienced entity, is experiencing other things. Chidabasa and I is well connected. So it means to say Chidabasa and I is the same thing. Chidabasa is the experienced entity which refers itself as I, myself. The I goes to the body-mind complex. Myself goes to the source of one's conscious existence. Okay, verse 42. And then the doubter has another one. He says, self merely excludes the idea of another. And the self does not say anything about kuta stuff. Yeah? So the guy is really stubborn about the kuta stuff. He says, when you talk about self, the only thing that does is to exclude otherness. Yeah? 
but it does not identify itself as the Kuta stuff. Yeah? And then Vijayaranya say, this exclusion of otherness is the nature of the self, is the self of Kuta stuff. Okay. So the self, which is the, the basis, yeah, is the ground of I, he, and she, and it, you know, this self, which does not exclude anything, okay? Because it embraces everything. But in discrimination, we know that once we are no longer I excluded from he, she, and it, and uh, and 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 otherwise she or he exclude from the other. So all these three persons they exclude they exclusive, okay? But kutasta is not exclusive, okay? So therefore, you have to discriminate, uh, exclude all these notions of uh, of otherness, and then you have the kuta stuff. This exclusion is in favor of our idea. This very exclusion is another name for discrimination. Okay, you you exclude everything that is dual. Okay, which is you now uh, <clears throat> duality. Plurality, okay, which is defined by certain specifics, certain characteristics, they exclude one another. They are self-exclusive because uh, uh, whatsoever is combined as as properties and attributes that define something is never going to be identical to others. As we say, there is no two flakes of snow which are the same. Huh? So this is exclusion. Exclusion is, is a way of seeing that uh, that is not a problem. The fact that it is exclusive, okay, is an education that is media. Yeah? So kutasta is that which embraces everything that is exclusive due to its own specifics, okay? So exclusion is in favor to our teachings. Huh? So the teachings means to say, yes, everything that is uh, exclusive. Huh? Because before we are saying the self merely excludes the idea of one another. Huh? So the self is one without another. But the self is not really exclusive in the sense that the self is lending existence to everything that is exclusive. <laughs> huh? a, a lot of people would like to be exclusive. Huh? Exclusive for me to say I'm really special. There is nobody like Lin in the world. There's nobody like me, okay? So I am so special. Yeah? So, but uh, it's not a good idea to be exclusive. Yeah? We have to understand the nature of the self, which uh, excludes, cancels the idea of exclusivity, yeah? of ordinance, of specifics. I hope I did not make it more confused because it's very simple. Okay, we'll stop here. We get back next week from this flock of 42. There are some nice things here to digest. And uh, so we stay with this. I'm trying to go a little bit faster now that we somehow we got into these basic terminologies uh, with the help of Lean. And uh, so we keep moving, right? Or not? Okie dokie. Anything else? No, thank you, Alinda. What a relief to have your internet working well. Makes such a difference. Much different, huh? Very nice. Yeah. It's yeah. going to get better. Ishwara Willing. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamudachate Purna Sya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishate Om Shanti 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 Thank you a lot. Thank you, my friends. Namaste. Today is 
uh, Friday. So we meet again soon. Yeah. Monday. Yeah. Namaste. Uh, Monday, Monday, Monday. Uh, yes. 11 o'clock. Because I'm, I'm going to have a, a, a seminar, but I, uh, I did it. I organized in a, in a way that is not going to, to cancel our classes. Okay? Obstructed. Right. Okay.